When internet companies go down, they go down. Netscape, eToys, MySpace, GeoCities, Flues, all gone without a trace. So what's different about Twitter? Welcome to Harry's Hobbies. Just two years ago, people were writing eulogies for Twitter as it had no product direction and was losing users and advertisers. And the fact that they were unable to cope with trolling really destroyed their credibility. Employees left in the dozens claimed that it was a very toxic environment and if they didn't leave by themselves, they would have probably gotten laid off anyways. And amongst all of this, Twitter was trying to sell themselves and they failed there as well. Wall Street public and the press were all merciless against Twitter, declaring that it was the end of Twitter. In fact, in a single weekend in February of 2016, over a million Twitter users tweeted, hashtag rip Twitter. But somehow, as all of this drama was unfolding, things started to change. It all started with Jack Dorsey coming back as CEO. And since then, star ex-employees, users and advertisers have all started to come back. And Twitter's stock has surged from $14 to over $40 and today has settled down at $36 in July of 2019. Twitter has been destroying earning expectations and has really made a miraculous and unexpected comeback. Twitter is the first social media company to lose a lot of their users and then grow again in a meaningful way. So what changed? Twitter has always tried to become a social media giant very similar to Facebook. They offer a strikingly similar experience and this has really split the population. They have really tried to create a major rivalry like Pepsi and Coke or Airbus and Boeing. But clearly, that was not working, so they took a step back and took a hard look at why users were actually using Twitter. And they identified news as a big proportion of their traffic. And in April of 2016, Twitter moved themselves from the social media section to the news section in the iOS app store. And it wasn't just an identity change, they were actually becoming more of a news discussion board. They started to stream local news broadcasts and promote news stories on the timeline. And this has really increased the traffic that Twitter sends to its advertisers and this has made advertisers very happy. They have completely cut out distractions and put $100 million projects to the side. Like Telepart which they paid $479 million for. They shut down Vine which they bought for $30 million and they sold Fabric to Google. Twitter itself has admitted that they were doing too many things and not doing any of them very well. And this new focus on news has really given them a purpose and allowed them to move forward. Twitter has also been making an aggressive push into premium live video. They started this venture with a $10 million deal with the NFL. They were able to stream 2016 Thursday Night Football on Twitter. And since then, they have made a slew of deals that has allowed them to stream every single minute of every single day and often even more than one at one time. And these streams have really renewed interest in Twitter. Advertisers have become much more interested in Twitter as there has been a lot more traffic coming to Twitter. As a result, ad rates have significantly gone up for Twitter. In fact, video has become such a significant portion of Twitter that in January of 2018, 90% of all of Twitter's spending was for video. In the past year, they have made over 30 deals with companies like ESPN, Live Nation, and BuzzFeed News and these are really starting to pay back. Aaron Goldman, the chief marketing officer of Forcey Insights, which is the company that provides Twitter with advertising, said that Forcey's clients ran more than $1 billion worth of ads through Twitter in 2017. Video has really played a huge role in Twitter's comeback and they have realized this as well. This is why they have given so much importance to video as it is their largest stream of revenue. Twitter has become very serious about the issues of abuse, harassment and threats throughout its platform. The product team has introduced a new algorithm, modified the timeline and increased the maximum character count to 280 characters from 140 characters. These changes have resulted in major user backlashes and severe negative criticism. But with time, these changes have actually allowed Twitter to attract more new and casual users. Since the introduction of the new algorithm in 2017, they have really been cracking down on abuse and harassment. They have been constantly iterating anti-harassment features at an unprecedented pace. They have begun to collapse tweets that they think are abusive. They built in anti-abuse filters into the search. They have allowed users to mute accounts who haven't verified their account using their phone number or email address. You can even mute users simply on the basis that someone is using the default profile picture. 
they have introduced mute filters that are applied to specific words. And of course, they have killed the default profile picture of eggs, which has pretty much become synonymous with trolls. And they have stepped up the consequences for serial abusers and hate groups. Since February of 2017, they have even gone as far as removing verification badges from white supremacists. Harassment and abuse still exist, but the magnitude is nowhere close to what it once used to be. And these changes have really convinced many people to give Twitter another chance. Twitter has also gotten lucky and benefited from many factors that were out of their control. Their strong stock performance has coincided with the global bull market. This is when the stock market as a whole is doing really well and as a result people are more likely to buy pushing up stock prices. And the decision to switch to the news industry followed Facebook's decision to pull back after several scandals. And this was right after all the tension for Snapchat's IPO had just died down. On top of all of this, Twitter's move to news industry perfectly coincided with the 2016 presidential election and Brexit. And how perfect is it that to this day, Donald Trump uses Twitter to provide updates on a daily basis. Now, analysts really aren't that fond of Twitter's talk as they think that it is overvalued and has a lot to do with speculation. Twitter's stock price is 25 times its earnings before taxes, interest, depreciation, and amortization. Now, to put this in perspective, Alphabet's is 14 times and Facebook's only half of that at 12.5 times. However, according to the same analysts, Twitter has one of the most important things in the stock market, which is momentum. So, after all of this, how are they doing today? Well, they're destroying earning expectations. During the first quarter of 2019, they had revenue that was 18% higher than the same period last year. Their revenue has increased to $787 million and video ads has made up the bulk of that increase. Twitter's monetizable daily active users has increased to 134 million people. They experienced a 12% increase in this number in just the first quarter of 2019. And the company remains profitable with its earnings increasing 200% up to $191 million. Not everyone, but most people are pleased with how Twitter has cracked down on abuse and harassment. Today, they take down 2.5 times more tweets that share personal information. And 38% more abusive tweets are taken down every single week. And these deleted tweets are being used for machine learning, making the algorithm better every single day. And something that has really attracted advertisers onto Twitter is that it's not just a platform to advertise, but Twitter also provides advertisers with data insight, more like Google. And after all of this, Twitter stock is still jumpy, and it's not really clear if it's going to be going up or down next. But either way, it is doing exponentially better than how it was just a couple of years ago. Twitter has been one of the biggest social media giants over the past decade. However, its pursuit to become more like Facebook and harassment issues have really reduced its user base. People simply had no reason to use Twitter when it was so similar to Facebook but worse. And these problems have really escalated with the rise of newer social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. But with a new focus on news and video and a bit of luck and reduced abuse, Twitter is definitely making a comeback and in a couple of years they may be able to grow to or even beat their peak. But that's all I have for you guys on Twitter. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Ari and I'll see you guys on the next one.